One of the challenges we have when we try to solve probability problems is that we need to find a way to count the number of potential outcomes correctly. When there's only five or six outcomes, that's not too difficult to do. The events are not that complicated. But when, when you're looking at um, experiments that have a lot of potential outcomes, and then you're going to run experiments in sequence, you might have a lot of different combinations of outcomes, right? like high scratch resistance, low shock resistance, high scratch resistance, high shock resistance, and so forth. There's only four outcomes. That's not too complicated. But if you have multiple experiments or multiple tests, then you might end up finding yourself in a um, quagmire of large numbers. And it's easy to double count events or to miscount events. So let's think about counting techniques for a little bit. Uh, in the mathematical jargon, we call this combinatorial analysis. We're finding ways in which events can combine with one another. A two-stage procedure, you can think of it as basically having K bags. And the first bag might have M1 item in it, and the second bag might have M2 items in it, and so forth, until the final K bag. This would have M1 things, M2 objects, items. The last one would be MK. So when you have a two-stage procedure, what you're doing is you first select a bag. Now, it turns out there's K different ways of doing that. You can pick the first bag or the second bag or the third bag all the way up to the K bag. And the second stage will be once you've selected a bag, you pick one of the items inside of it. Now, depending on the bag that you pick, you'll have a different list of potential items to pick from for your second stage. It sounds complicated when I say it this way, but this is just equivalent to pick, picking one of the M items that you have in total, assuming here that M is the sum um, the number of items in the first bag and the second bag all the way up to the last bag. And if it turns out that all of the bags had the same number of items in them, if M1 was the same thing as M2, which was the same thing as M3 all the way up to MK, let's say N, then the number of ways the two-stage procedure could occur would just be K times N. There are K ways to pick a bag and within each of the bags that you've picked there's going to be n ways to pick an item so k choices here n choices here for a total of k times n Uh, let's look about this. Sorry, let's look at this in a more practical way. How many ways are there to first roll a die and then to draw a card from a shuffled 52 card pack? Let's give you an example. You could first start, you roll the die, you get a four. Then you give me a 52 card pack and you're asking me to draw a card from it and I get the jack of spades. So the four, roll of a die, jack of spades, the card. This is one of the ways in which I can get a roll of a die and the choice from a card. Okay. Now you might do it again and you would get something completely different. Perhaps you try it and you get a three together with a two of hearts. So how many different combinations of a roll and card can you get? This is really what the question is asking. Well, there's six ways that the first step can turn out. You can roll a one or two or three or four or five or a six.
And once you've rolled one of these, for each of them, I'm only going to draw them here for the, assuming you rolled the two, there's 52 ways. Pretend this is a clubs for a second here. There's 52 ways to draw a card. So six ways to roll the die, that's the K, times 52 cards to roll, or to draw a card, that's the N, and that gives you a total of 312 ways that you can combine rolling a die together with picking a card. Slightly different question. How many ways are there to draw two tickets numbered 1 to 100 from a bag? Assuming you draw the first one with the right hand and the second one with the left hand. Well, you have, as before, this tree structure. There's 100 ways to draw the first ticket and now when the time comes to pick the second ticket you do not have a hundred ways anymore because you have already removed one of them so whatever choice you've made, let's say you're the first or choice, whatever um, ticket has been drawn, the second time around, there isn't going to be 100 choices anymore. There's only going to be 99 choices. You cannot redraw ticket number one again. So you'd have to start with two, three, all the way up to 100. And that's true for all of them. Right? When you get to 100, potentially, Draw one all the way up to 99, but it'd be impossible for you to draw 100 again because you've already drawn it. So let me reiterate here. I just don't want. Um, I want to make sure that nobody's misunderstanding what I'm saying. You could have potentially drawn the first ticket when you picked with your right hand. And then, I mean, if you've picked the first ticket, all of the other paths here are gone. They're not available to you because that's not what actually happened. And then once you've drawn the first ticket with your right hand, ticket number one, when you look at the ticket you drew with your second hand, perhaps you ended up drawing ticket number three. So all of the other options are not open to you anymore. So you get the combination here of tickets one and three. Well, how many such combinations are there in total? There are going to be 100 choices for your K. And for your N, the number of items in each of the bags, the number of options open to you once the first step, first stage has been completed, that's 99. So the total number of ways, k times n, 100 times 99, that's 9900 ways. Does it matter that we're picking the first one with the right hand and the second one with the left hand? No, that's a red herring. So this is one way to basically say or to remind you that once you've picked the ticket, you're not going to put it back and then have a second go at picking it again. Right? But right hand, left hand, using your <laughs> ESP, it doesn't matter, right? It's, 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 that's, that part is a red herring. But very often you'll get these tidbits of information in the way the problem is asked. It doesn't make it clear why they're there. Well, often they're there for a reason. You just have to think about what that reason would be. In this case, there's no real reason, apart from telling you that you know, you're not putting the ticket back in once you've picked the ticket. Well, that's a two-stage procedure. Uh, you can imagine something called a K-stage process. 
right? You might have a number of possibilities at each stage, and then you would just multiply the number of outcomes along the way. So this could be your first stage, and there might be a total of n1 possibilities. And for each of those, let's say we took this one here, there's a further n2 possibilities at stage 2. I'm not writing them all, but each one of them here is also n2 possibilities, right? And then let's take this one for instance. There could be a third stage. For the number of possibilities being N3 and so forth. So in total, and this is irrelevant of the previous outcomes, there would be a grand total of N1 possibilities in the first stage. How many ways are there to roll a die? Times N2 possibilities in the second stage, perhaps then you pick, you draw a card from a deck, then N3 possibilities to pick a ticket from 1 to N100, all the way up to N K stage, NK possibilities to do your K, um, K uh, thing would be deciding if it's going to be heads or tail, flip of a coin. So in total then, you would have as many ways for the full process to turn out as the product of the ways of the individual stages.